Welcome. Today's video will discuss resume writing and is designed with a high school theater student in mind. Though resume writing may not be the most exciting topic, it is a valuable one. A well-written and formatted resume is key to your future success. We're going to start with a brief definition of what a resume is, and keeping in mind that not all theater students will enter the entertainment field, we are going to look at both general guidelines that apply to most, if not all, resumes, and then we're going to look at some things that are specific to students preparing to enter the field of theater. A resume is a brief written account of personal, educational, and professional qualifications and experience as prepared by an applicant for a job or educational program. Depending on the career field you enter, there will likely be resume guidelines specific to your vocation. However, there are some general guidelines for all resumes. The first major concept that you need to realize is that you are what you are selling. Keep this in mind for two reasons. Number one, your name needs to be prominent at the top of the page. This is not the time to worry about modesty. Don't be afraid to brag on yourself. That said, keep in mind our number two major concept. Number two, never lie on a resume. Make sure that everything on that resume is truthful. Nothing will come back to haunt you faster than a lie on a resume. Let's take a look at the appearance of a resume. Resumes are typically one page, especially if you are a beginner. There are some jobs, such as university teaching positions, which may ask for a longer, multi-page document known as a curriculum vita. However, when you see the word resume, think one page. Use an easy-to-read professional font. Some examples are Times New Roman or Calibri. It is not uncommon for someone to take 60 seconds or less to quickly scan a resume. This is not time to use a pretty or cute font. Use a font size of around 12. You do not have to fill the page. Do not try to fake anyone out by trying to fill the white space. If you are a beginner, white space is okay. You need to select at most two fonts. One font is totally acceptable, but it is also acceptable to use up to two fonts. Perhaps one for headings and the other for the information beneath the heading. But do not use more than two fonts. It will get messy and unprofessional looking. Unless you are going into a field like graphic design, you want to keep that ink black and professional. Use margins between half an inch and an inch. White space is an important part of keeping the document looking clean and crisp. Avoid first person pronouns. Instead of writing something like, I exceeded sales quota, use a bullet point and begin with that verb, exceeded sales quota. Also be aware that if you use a bullet point, you do not use ending punctuation. Unless you are specifically asked for references, do not include them. Years ago, it was standard to include three references, but these days, while you do need to have those references ready to go in case you are asked for them, you don't want to include them in your initial resume. Now this is very important. List your experience and credentials in reverse chronological order. What that means is that your current job is listed first and your first job is listed last further down the page. For the high school theater student, your most recent role is going to be listed first, while further down the page is the stuff you did when you were younger. Obviously, you want to avoid spelling, capitalization, and grammatical errors. It is highly advisable to have your resume read by two or three professionals. This could be teachers, directors, or someone working in the industry. 
When we read our own writing, it is very easy for our brains to play tricks on us and insert that word that's missing on the page, but that we know we meant to put there. Finally, if you send the resume by email or upload it online, do so as a PDF. Unless you're specifically asked to send it in another format, send your resume as a PDF. If you send it as a Word document, there's a chance that the fonts or the margins or whatever will open up incorrectly and it won't appear as you intended it to. By sending it as a PDF, what you send them is what they're actually going to see on the page. Now let's look at some guidelines specific to a high school theater resume. Our example will focus on an acting resume. However, I will point out guidelines for both general and technical theater resumes as well. Be aware that an acting resume is typically stapled to or printed on the back of an actor's headshot. A headshot is a head and shoulders picture of an actor. Headshots and what makes a good headshot is a whole other topic, one which this video will not cover. Let's look at the first major section of a resume. Section 1, the header. At the top, obviously you're going to see your name. Make sure it's a nice bold font. Under that, you're probably going to want to put a descriptor such as actor or actor singer or actor singer dancer. Next comes your contact information. There was a time in the past when you might have put your mailing address there, but that's no longer true. Now, you want to put just your phone number and an email address. Avoid any email address that sounds unprofessional, perhaps juvenile, such as Pokemon 37, or certainly nothing that sounds suggestive like Hot Mama. At some point in the future, you may want to replace your contact information with that of your agents. However, for now, just provide your phone number and email address. Below that, actors provide their physical stats, such as current height, weight, eye color, hair color. Once upon a time, actors would place an age range in this section, but don't do that. In fact, I am seeing fewer resumes with weight, so that may also become unnecessary. But for now, I'm still advising to include it. If you are a vocalist, include your voice part, such as soprano, alto, or baritone, and include a specific vocal range. If you are not aware of what your specific vocal range is, work with a professional to find out what it is. Obviously, if you're building a technical theater resume, you can leave off your physical stats. Section 2, your experience. For most of you, theater will be your header. But if you do have TV, film, or commercial credits, you would add a separate header for those areas as well. Under the heading of theater, you will have four clean columns. In the first column is the title of the play in italics. In the second, the name of the role. The third is for the location or the producing group. And in the fourth, the name of the director. When I was younger, it was advised for high school students not to put down the name of the director. However, many university reps like to see who you have worked with, especially if you have worked with more than one director. I want to remind you that your roles need to be listed in reverse chronological order. So at the top is the most recent and at the bottom, the oldest. If you are perhaps a relatively new actor, with little or no stage credits, you can include classwork in this section, such as scene from, title of play. It is imperative that students know when to let go, meaning you need to know when it's no longer appropriate or beneficial to continue to list old credits. If you are a ninth grader, it's okay to list a few middle school credits, but the goal is to replace middle school credits with high school credits. By the time you get to college, you should absolutely not have middle school credits listed on your resume. And by the time you enter the professional world, no one cares about your leading role in high school. 
Section 3. Education and Training You can list this under two subheadings. Under Education, you will want to list your high school and your expected graduation date. Later, this will be replaced by your university or conservatory degree or degrees. Beneath your degree, list applicable coursework such as Theater 1, etc. You may also want a heading for related training. This could include private voice lessons, workshops, thespian festivals, or the like. Finally, we get to the section for special skills. Special skills are things that may help you get a job. For instance, if a casting director is casting the role of a cab driver, they're going to want someone who is a licensed driver. Some special skills you may want to consider are voice and speech, musical instruments, dance, combat and weaponry, athletic and circus skills, vehicles, etc. But this is not the time to get cute. No one cares if you like long walks on the beach or you're a Virgo. So there you have it, a high school theater resume. A couple of final notes. University programs typically value a well-rounded theater student. If you are applying for a university program, I encourage you to include both acting and technical experience. If you have a focus between the two, place that focus on the top. In other words, if I'm an actor who has also done tech, I'd list my acting experience first and then my tech experience. Or if I'm a technician who has also appeared on stage, I would list my technical experience first and then my acting experience. My final note is resume writing trends tend to change. Some of the information I gave you today differs from information I received as a young actor 20 plus years ago. As a professional, it is wise to research the latest articles about resume writing trends in your field. I hope you found this tutorial on resume writing for the high school theater student helpful. Break a leg.